Hey, welcome to the session on Toolgen as your teammate uh, for rapid development. I'm Teja. I'm a developer advocate at Toolgen. So in this session, uh, we'll be looking into specific aspects about what is Toolgen and uh, how you can get started with it, things you can build with it, and then we're at a common competitive place to contribute back to open source projects and Toolgen can be your choice. So we'll look at how you can contribute to Toolgen as it's an open source low code platform. So we'll look at what is Toolgen in the first place. Uh, as I said, Toolgen is an uh, open source low code platform for building internal tools or business applications. If you do not know what internal tools are, uh, these are tools or applications internally used for specific purposes and built by software developers within an organization. And these tools are fully tailored and used around for the organization needs. And unfortunately, uh, developers spend a lot of time building and maintaining them uh, apart from their main product. And now with Toolget, uh, engineering teams can actually leverage this low code possibility to cut down their engineering efforts in this development of internal tools and can increase the productivity. So uh, how does that work? So building apps with Toolget can be done in three steps. First, uh, you connect to the data source. It can be a database or an API that brings you the data. And then the next part is where you build queries to fetch the data from the data source you connected to. So where you build queries to perform request tests to the data source. And then once you have the queries ready, which also brings the data ready, and with that data, you build user interfaces with the readily available components and populate the information uh, from the data that you got from the queries. So you connect to the data source, build queries, and then the build UI. So we look at how we do it. So let's get started on building a simple application that also helps you to understand how you can start using Toolget for building internal tools. All right, before I jump into start building it, let me show what we're going to build now. So I have created a fast hack demo application. Uh, which actually shows you. So the, all of this data is actually coming from the fake store API product. So this is uh, the data source that I'm using, which is the products endpoints of the fake store API.com as a base URL. So this is a list of different products and each product has its own ID, title, price, a description and a category uh, and all of that. So all of these are different products here. And now we made this as the data source for our internal tool application uh, or a simple application that we're going to build. With this as the source, uh, we create an application just like this. So where you click on a specific product that brings up the image and the title, the price and the rating and the specific description from here. So just like that, it has a title, price, description, and a category uh, with the rating along with site. There you go. So you click on different products, and then it gives you a complete detailed uh, description and the information of the product from that API. So how do you do it? Go ahead uh, to toolgit.com or you get into app.toolgit.com. Once you're here, you can click on create new app, or you see that new app button. Once you click on that, you should be landing into the app builder. So this is where you start building the application. So the huge playground you see here is the canvas for building the application. And then the left side bar uh, that you see here is where you connect the data sources. So this is where the step one begins. And then you see the right side, this is the component manager. Uh, these are pre-built uh, ready to use components uh, for your UI, where you can actually start dragging and dropping and start building the UI. Okay, so then the third part is where uh, the query panel is here. So this query panel will help you to create queries with the data source that you created in the first step, right? Let's go ahead and create uh, a data source. You can click on this add or edit data sources. And then once you are here, you can click on add data source. And this brings up your gallery of different integrations that we support currently. So you can connect to any of this from here, or if you, if you do not find what you're looking for, uh, now it's an open source product, so you can uh, create one plug in or the data source of your choice. So for now, we'll be sticking with the REST API thing. So the base URL for us, in our case, is going to be fakestoreapi.com. So I would not need products here because we only need the base URL. So once you have this, we would not need any headers and that authentication type because it's a public open API to use. You can click on save once you're done. So now it creates a data source. So you can see the data source is added. You can see that the query panel came up with the data source we just created, which is REST API. So now we are done with the step one, which is adding the data source. 
the data source is ready to use. Let's go ahead and create a query. So how you do it? You get into the query panel here, click on REST API. So you can see that the fake store api.com, the base URL which we have given in the data source is ready to use as a new query. So you can see that we are creating a new query here. You can name it as a get products, right? So now uh, the endpoint what we would need is forward slash products. So uh, as I said, we would not need any headers here and also uh, any authentication types. So once you have this endpoint uh, ready, you can click on preview here. You should be able to see the data is coming up here. The same data what you have seen here uh, for fake store API .com forward slash fake store API .com forward slash products is now uh, inside the application here. So this is how you can simply create a query from the data source that fetches the information that you need. There you go. So now let's go ahead and create this. So once you create, you should be able to see that the query is saved here. So it is ready to use. All right, you can preview it one more time. Once you click on the preview, you should be able to see the data up here. All right, we're done with the step one on adding the data source and the step two to creating a query to fetch the information from the data source. And this third step is about presenting this data into the UI. So how do you do that? And that's where you will leverage this uh, ready to use components here. So let's go ahead and bring a table. So you can see that the table component here is here or you can search for it. You can drag and drop into the canvas and then you can uh, minimize it a bit, sorry, maximize to the bottom. And then uh, once you click on the component, you should be able to see the component manager changes to properties and styles. So as I'm now on the table component, the moment I click on that, you should be able to see that it pops up with uh, properties and styles tab of this specific component table. Right, let's click on this and the data what you are seeing here is coming from here. This is the complete dummy data uh, presented right now. You can remove this up and now, once you have the uh, query ready, uh, as now you run this up, you should be able to see the data here, right? So you can now connect this data to the component and populate it. So how do you do that? You insert two curly braces and this will help you to access the query information from here. All you need to do is to say queries and then on dot, you will be, you'll be already getting the suggestions to select different queries that you have. But for now, we only have get products. And then once you click on that, you should be able to see the information that you'd be able to access. And you can say dot data. And there you go, you have the data ready. So the moment I have this uh, inserted here, the table will be populated with the data up here. There you go. So the whole information of the API data, which is up here, is now converted into a structured table with the help of a component, uh, the table component, right? So I'm not interested in all of the columns. So I would only need the title component, title column here. So I would be removing ID and uh, price description, category and image and all of that. So I'm left with only the title of the product. So I can increase the number of uh, records I can see here. So you can click on the table component, go bottom. You can see that number of rows per page. You can change it to 20 so that you have more items uh, in the first page. Uh, you can access further more items by clicking on the uh, next button here, which takes you to the next page. There you go. We are clear with the part one and then we can also enable uh, on highlight the selected row. So this will help you to understand which row is currently selected. So if you click on and left it, you can just know uh, what is the current row that is active or selected. We call this as a selected row. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and bring a component, which is a container. This will help us to hold different other components. It also acts as a good background for us. So have this here. You can, you can minimize this query panel for now. We would not need this because we would be only using one query for this purpose. So minimize this, there you go. Uh, and now what I wanted to do here, on click of this specific item, I wanted to show an image of this product and the price of it and the rating of it. All right, so the first thing is the image. So I would need an image component, go to the component manager again and search for image. And here you go, you can drag and drop it to the container. So you can increase the size of the image component, place it accordingly if, as you wish. Okay, don't mind the UI. The whole intention is to show you the functionality and how you can start using it. So image is here and now I would need a, a text component to set the title here. So I will spread it across to the sites. 
and then i would need another one which to show the price so i can put it up here for the price set it to something like price for now i'll change it uh, once we move on to the next step and then i would also need a rating one you can search for uh, star com or rating component uh, you have the star rating component is here and then you can place it here all right so let's go ahead and now the kind of ui is uh, a bit ready <laughs> now the intention is to connect this to the image and the title and the price and the rating okay so how do you do that you click on this image first and then once you click on this as you know you'd be able to see the properties and the styles tab of the specific component go ahead and change this url and now the same way as how we did for the table component start typing the uh, curly braces for two times and then you should be able to access the component data right now so previously we were accessing the queries data by saying queries and queries and that get products but now we will be accessing the components data by saying components dot the the component id which is table one here if you'd be able to see that the table id is table one so components dot table one and now you can able to see that the selected row is here. So now you, if you look at that selected row is white gold plated princess. So as you move on, if I just say dot selected row, uh, it has the title the same. So white gold plated princess, this is here, right? So, but now I would not need the title. I would be needing the image of it. So if you just see that we have the image ready. There you go. If I click on the different um, rows, the selected row changes and the respective image changes and updates here. It's same with the title as well. So click on the text component that you would like to add title for. Once you click on that, you go to the properties and the same style again, components.table1.selectedRow and now it's title. There you go. All right, uh, you can set this alignment to center by getting into the styles tab here, uh, right? So I can expand it a bit more. Let me also fetch the prices directly. So you have this text here and now I can access the price by starting to use this notations. Just say components dot table one dot selected row and then dot price. There you go. And you can also add something like this. It goes up there. You can also change the uh, font weight to normal to bold and as your choice, but don't focus on the UI, as I said, uh, just also it's, it's all about the functionality. Uh, let's go ahead, set the rating now. Click on the component and go to the properties tab again. Uh, remove this, you can just say rating. And then the default number of stars is going to be dynamic coming from the rows. So component.table1.selectedRow.rating and dot rate. There you go. So uh, the moment you click on a different items here, we should be able to see it's, it gets updated accordingly. So men casual shirt, it's a shirt and it's a title with the price and the rating. So uh, that's pretty much how you can start using it. You can create a data source from here. So the choice of yours, cho you know, the choice of the data source that you can select right from here. And then you create a query from the query panel here for fetching the data. We created one with the REST API, and then we use the canvas to drop the components and populate the data, which is coming from the queries, right? So there you go. So now how you can make it public, you can just click on this release. Uh, this will release the application. And for sharing this and making it public, you, you need to click on this share icon here, uh, which is next to the release button. Once you click on that, you should be able to see this make application public. And then you, 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 have, you also have this flexibility to change the um, URL a bit, not to the fullest. <laughs> so if you go for self first, it can be your choice. So you can now change it to FOSS hack one or something as such or demo or anything that matters. So now you can copy it and open it up and use it across. So that's pretty much how you can quickly start building applications with Toolget and you can uh, imagine how quickly you can start building apps by you know three steps, not more than that. <laughs> so if you go for much bigger applications, the use case changes, but this is the bare minimum, right? So let's get back and here we are. And now uh, 
things that you can actually build with toolJet. So what else you can build with this? So we have a couple of use cases we build for uh, presenting some use cases in our tutorials or in some places to present across. So uh, we have done a few things. So with toolJet and Amazon Web Services, we had a simple application, which is a Amazon S3 file explorer that helps us to look at the data or the information that exists in a S3 bucket and then see how we can add or even explore or fetch it uh, to the buckets so which from a single page that builds with that build with toolchain right and then for other cases you have a toolchain with app right we were able to build a hr management system so for startups who would wish to have their own kind of uh, hr management system they could use toolchain and app right as backend to build an organization dashboard or employees request list and calendar and request leave and management and all of that so as you move on, there will be much more cases uh, with Toolget and Stripe. We created a refund tool uh, where it can be helpful for vendors or the merchants to actually perform the refund Stripe from a single application in a, uh, with, with help of Toolget and Stripe. And same with GitHub, uh, with using GitHub APIs, uh, they can be, you can do a lot of things, but we, were, uh, we have done a bug tracker app that helps us to track a couple of bugs with the GitHub API. And then with Google Sheets, we, were, we have created a coupon code manager. There can be many cases that you can think of, but these are some use cases that we were able to present for you to give you a context on uh, what you could build with this. So with the REST API, we used a constats.app API to show the cryptocurrency dashboard app, uh, which shows the, you know, uh, you know, the price and the price change in the last hour or the coins and all of that so by using the toolchain and the REST API. This is how we have done for the fake story API. It's, it's pretty much similar. So uh, what's next? So you can go ahead and you can also start contributing uh, to toolchain by getting into github.com forward slash toolchain forward slash tools and then forward slash issues. So once you're up there, you can uh, look out for good first issues or up for grabs and then start uh, contributing to toolchain as your choice. And then the resources, as I said to you, the couple of uh, use cases that I have shown you previously are actually taken from our blog items. You can learn how to build them from the scratch. You can go to blog.toolJet.com to explore all of those possibilities. And then to learn more about how to use ToolJet much better, you can also explore our documentation at docs.toolJet.com. And for anywhere you got stuck while building it and couldn't make it, uh, you can get into our workspace toolj.com forward slash slack. Once you're up there, you should be able to find a general channel. Uh, you can post all of your questions. There you go. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for listening to me and we'll see you around.